Can you imagine a huge garden flourishing in the heart of a desert? These aren't your average flower beds. Believed to have existed some 2,500 years ago, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon are the most puzzling of the seven ancient marvels. Furthermore, investigating the gardens has been made interesting by their unique nature and the suspense surrounding their location and disappearance. Was the amazing structure a tribute to a king's power or a proof of love? Were they real awesomeness or just clever fables? Greetings from mystery. We're exploring the history of the Hanging Gardens in this episode and looking into the juicy debate of whether they were real or just a figment of the imagination. Come stroll with us down the lane of discovery. With a history of existence stretching back to 3000 BCE, Babylon was an ancient city located in modern-day Iraq, approximately 80 kilometers to the south of Baghdad. This city boomed under the reign of Nebuchadnezzar II. Nabopolassar, Nebuchadnezzar's father, established the empire between 625 and 605 BCE as a result of his conquests over the Assyrian Empire. Later on in his reign, Nebuchadnezzar II accomplished even more, taking Jerusalem in 597 BCE. The Babylonian monarch then began to build one of the most magnificent cities in the world as his capital. Maybe he added the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, too? Now here's the twist. The gardens were also called the Hanging Gardens of Semiramis, named after the mythical Assyrian queen believed to have rebuilt Babylon in the 9th century BCE. The Greek historian Herodotus, writing in the 5th century BCE, mentions the walls and Babylon's amazing irrigation system, but makes no mention of gardens. Interestingly, huge gardens have existed in Mesopotamia before the time of the Babylonians. In fact, there are representations of them on a relief panel in the British Museum in London that was taken from the North Palace of Ashurbanipal, 668-631 BCE, in Nineveh. Moreover, some scholars are of the opinion that the entire concept of the Babylonian gardens is the product of a huge mistake and that Sennacherib constructed the legendary marvel at Nineveh. Apparently, Nineveh had some impressive gardens, so the confusion might be understandable. So, where were these breathtaking gardens actually located? The exact location of the hanging gardens still remains a mystery, despite their fascinating quality. While some historians stick to the ancient texts and wait for archaeology to bring forth evidence, others insist that the gardens were in Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire rather than Babylon. Isn't this getting interesting? On a related note, close to the modern-day Iraqi city of Mosul, Nineveh is an ancient city in Upper Mesopotamia on the left bank of the Tigris River. As the capital of the Assyrian Empire, it was once the biggest metropolis on Earth. But here's the thing. Some people think the whole hanging gardens thing might just be a big story altogether. Babylon itself was once a key player in the Middle East, controlling the Fertile Crescent, a land flowing with rivers and perfect for growing things. No wonder they had some pretty impressive gardens, even if the hanging gardens themselves might be a bit of a mystery. Although historians and archaeologists have been digging for years, they have not yet found any concrete evidence of the lost wonder. The only clues we have are from old writings, which say they were located in the ancient city of Babel, which is another name for Babylon. So the plot thickens. Were these gardens real, or just an aspect of someone's imagination? We'll look into some more hints and see what we can discover. Here's the thing. There's no actual evidence that shows the existence of the Hanging Gardens. Some people think the gardens are only mentioned in Greek and Roman mythology and are imaginary. Some claim the gardens existed but were destroyed, most likely after a first-century earthquake. However, discoveries made during excavations in Babylon have produced strong hints. The remains of earlier walls that may have been a component of the gardens were discovered by the German archaeologist Robert Koldeway. These walls have elaborate irrigation and water channel systems, indicating the existence of a sophisticated watering system, which is essential for the sustenance of such lush gardens in a desert environment. The first written mention of the gardens comes from Barassus, a priest from Babylon who lived way back in 290 BC. While much of his depictions of Babylon have been confirmed by archaeology, his work mainly remains as cited passages in those of later writers. Additionally, according to Barassus, these gardens have huge trees and flowers growing on tall, mountain-like terraces. That makes sense, right? 
watering hanging plants would be way easier on elevated platforms, and it would definitely look impressive. Several other texts give the impression that the gardens were still in use in the 4th century BCE, although they were all written centuries after Nebuchadnezzar's reign. The writers were most likely ignorant of architecture and gardening and had never even been to Babylon. How accurate are their accounts? When describing the hanging gardens, historians Strabo and Diodorus Siculus relied on what they had heard from various history books. The gardens were located close to the Euphrates River and had steps and water lifting devices to access various floors. One major obstacle is that there are no Babylonian sources that mention the gardens, not even in accounts of Nebuchadnezzar's exploits. This silence contrasts sharply with the period's extensive Babylonian records. We cannot completely reject the legend because of its prevalence in classical literature and its status as a world wonder. As archaeology continues to investigate, perhaps time will tell. What other explanations are there for this ancient wonder? Barassus has something. The man who published the first written account of the gardens? Barassus. He goes on to say that the gardens were created by King Nebuchadnezzar II for Amitus. The hanging gardens were built as a present for King Nebuchadnezzar II's wife, Queen Amatus, who was born in Media, modern-day Iran. Queen Amatus missed her native mountains and flora, and she was homesick. Her homesickness was supposed to be relieved by the hanging gardens. As a status symbol and a display of wealth, rich people in Babylonian society at the time frequently tended their own private gardens. The Fertile Crescent, where gardens were regarded as a paradise, is where most scholars feel that the idea of maintaining gardens only for enjoyment rather than food production first emerged. From that point on, the idea would expand throughout the ancient Mediterranean to the point that by the Hellenistic era, even private individuals were tending to their own gardens in their houses. Plants and flowers were not the only things found in gardens. The ancient gardeners also wised water, sculpture, and architectural elements, and they took the vistas into account. How did they manage to build such a complex structure in that era? The gardens were a display of excellent engineering expertise, not just lovely displays of flowers. It was a giant step pyramid that needed top architectural methods to sustain its weight and endure the weather. The coolest part? The irrigation system. There were chain pumps that extracted water from the far Euphrates River. This innovation made the different plants survive in a dry region. Additionally, old records describe an intricate system of stairs, terraces, and buildings pointing at the details. We're talking really thick walls that have wide hallways, showing us how enormous the building is. The stories stated that the passageways were 10 feet wide and the walls were 22 feet thick. Also, the construction method is unique. It comprises bricks, reeds, and a lead-lined base. This shows the creativity used to provide a suitable foundation for the gardens. What more? The gardens gave an extraordinary feeling in addition to being beautiful. The descriptions speak of a multitude of trees, flowers, and other plants, creating a colorful display of nature's brilliance. Some records even include rare fish in ponds and caged birds and animals. How fascinating can it get? The name Hanging Gardens does not imply that the gardens were dangling from ropes or suspended in midair. Rather, these were terraced gardens that were raised. From a distance, the gardens appear to be hanging in the air, hence the name Hanging. The story of the Hanging Gardens is pretty mind-blowing, right? It's no surprise that it has inspired many modern projects in the present day. Based on the historical impact and shortage of information, recreating the Hanging Gardens of Babylon is a huge task. However, some dedicated people and organizations are giving it a shot. They plan to recreate the multi-level structure by using advanced architecture and irrigation. To pick the right plants, experts have been researching to know what would have flourished in the hanging gardens. Horticulturalists have included many exotic species while maintaining the spirit of the original gardens. In addition to this, researchers and gardeners aim to duplicate the watering techniques used in the hanging gardens through smart irrigation systems. They help plant growth by distributing water with automation and sensors. By recreating the hanging gardens, we're not just bringing back history, we're honoring the rich cultural heritage of the ancient wonder. If successful, these gardens might grow into popular travel destinations that draw tourists from all over the world. Both the general development of the area and the local communities may benefit economically from this.
So, who knows? With a little more research, technical innovation, and horticultural knowledge, we might just be able to bring back the majesty that once captivated the ancient world. As we journey through the halls of history, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon stand as proof of human creativity and ingenuity. They remind us of the wonders that humans could achieve years ago and inspire us to seek out discoveries that unveil the secrets of our rich cultures. Through these extraordinary endeavors, the Hanging Gardens continue to amaze us, connecting the present with the past and reminding us of the heights our architectural achievements can reach. Even with these reminders, historians are still in awe. No one knows if the Hanging Gardens of Babylon are a fable or a real aspect of history. Do you think the Hanging Gardens will ever be truly discovered? Hey friends, remember to subscribe so you can catch up on upcoming mysteries. There is so much more to unravel and we don't want to do it without you.